You're so beautiful. And so difficult. But undeniably beautiful. And you are still so smooth. <laughs> I missed you. I miss being with you. Now, come on, Max. You're telling me there's not one woman down in Argentina that wants to keep you warm at night. Nobody special. Nobody like you. But then there is nobody like you, Blair Kramer. You're one of a kind. I just don't want to lose you. Not again. What are you saying, Max? I'm leaving to go back home tomorrow. I want you to come with me. If Bo's in trouble, I want to help. The situation is under control, Lindsay. You can go. I'd feel better if I could stay until I know he's all right. Well, I'd feel better if you would go. The last time I looked, this isn't your house. Bo's not your husband or even your boyfriend. I live here, and Bo's the father of my child. And to be perfectly honest, Lindsay... You have a way of turning everything into the Lindsay show, and that's not what Bo needs right now. I would never do anything to upset him. You wouldn't mean to, but you're Lindsay Rappaport. It just goes with the territory. Now, if you'll excuse me. You have no authority. I'm here because Rex asked me to be, and because Bo is my friend. Bo is your friend? Every bit, as much as he is yours. Bo and I are friends, and that's are that. Are you two still fighting over Bo? I guess some things never change. Oh. You might want to take it easy on the bourbon. I got a good idea, big brother. Why don't you grieve your way and I'll grieve mine? You're not grieving. You're brooding. You have been ever since we got the news. I know that you and Paul had your differences. But the man was our father. Now he's dead and gone. For God's sake, show him some respect. Why should I show you some Buchanan any respect? He never showed me any. Actually, I think the universe has more important things to do than to set up yet another pointless grudge match between us. Pointless? Hmm. I'm not so sure it's pointless. I'd... How can you be so certain that we don't have something really important to discuss? Well, the thing is, I don't want to discuss anything with you. My children are upstairs, two of whom I never get to see. And their grandfather just died. I should be spending today with them, not you. Hello, hello! You're not my favorite person either. But there really is something very important that I need to say to you. Oh, I doubt it. You better hear me out, Victoria. Because I've kept this to myself far too long, Six. I really don't care about what goes on between you and Clint. And I wish to hell you would leave me out of it. This has nothing to do with Clint. This is about your father, Victor. Victor? Dorian? We've covered that subject ad nauseum. But we haven't covered the fact that I'm the one who killed him. Let me tell you something. Asa was crazy about you. And I know that he would understand that you didn't get a chance to see him before he died. I didn't get a chance to see him. Neither did Kevin and Joey. And CJ... CJ couldn't even make it here for this today. But I do know one thing. I know that Asa knew exactly how much we all loved him. But that's what's wrong, Dad. When I finally did decide to come by, it was only so I could sucker him into overruling you and Grandpa about the trust fund thing. Asa was so good to me. He believed in my music. I loved him so much. 
And I never got a chance to tell him that. In the end, all I cared about was the money. <laughs> and I'm just trying to pick them all up. She throws a drink in my face, and I'm not sure what she's screaming at me, but by the looks of the people around us, it wasn't good. It was not you know, the love connection. No, 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 you're making it up. You're yeah. making it up. No, Ke Kevin, back me up. Mm. I was there. I was there. Yeah. Zane wasn't saying <laughs> Kelly will be here to vouch for the fact that we tried to stop the insanity, but we were just laughing too. Yeah. Oh, you are truly terribly <laughs> pathetic. Well, at least you tried. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, Kevin's <laughs> pathetic. Easy, yeah, it is pathetic. Easy, man. Oh. So, I would like to hear a little bit about your love life. Oh. <laughs> well, what about it? I am a very happy newlywed, and I have a gorgeous husband and a beautiful but fussy daughter that mm -hmm. my husband is understanding enough to take care of so I can hang out with you guys. Oh, that's, that's a, a nice try. <laughs> but what about your love life? <laughs> Uh, let's just say it was a long time coming. And next. All right. Okay, okay, new topic. What do we all think about dad dating Dorian Lord? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Oh. What? Bad subject? Uh, I don't know. Ask Dustin Hoffman over here. Huh? <laughs> you didn't know that Dorian and Joey were an item back in the day? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I think I blocked that out, like the memory of a car accident. Uh, it wasn't like that. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> insane? No. You cornered that market a long time ago. Think about it. Why would I lie? Why would you lie? Oh, I can think of about a million reasons right off the top of my head. Name one. I am not having this conversation with you. You know, I would think that you'd be thrilled that I'm letting you off the hook. I don't want to be let off the hook, okay? I accepted a long time ago that I murdered my father. Except you didn't. I did. Actually, Dorian, neither one of us did. You can't have forgotten his triumphant return from the grave a few years ago. If it really was him. Oh, for heaven's sakes! You know, I know that everything in your life is a competition. I believe you seriously expect me to argue over who killed Victor and that you want to win. You want to rehash Victor, you go right ahead. You're on your own. I want no part of it. I refuse to define my life by how it relates to yours. Oh? And how do you define your life? Excuse me? We've just been to Ace's funeral. We've heard uh, speeches, eulogies. We, we We've heard all about his dreams, hopes, and accomplishments. A virtual tour of what defined that man's life. So I'm asking you again. What defines yours, Vicky? Because from where I'm standing, it looks pretty damn empty to me. <laughs>